Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we do part two of the serial number generation with Google Apps Script. I'm just going to correct a couple of things that I had in my last video. So basically what I'm doing here is uh, just generating an automatic uh, sequential code when I put a new name here. So without a formula, it just puts a new number and is the greatest of these numbers. However, in my last code, if I had this upside down, if my list was not ordered and I put a new one, then it would go with two, with three, with four. So here we fix this so that it works anyway. And we'll fix just a couple of other things. For example, if I delete that I have a delete and that if I have a number already and I change my name, for example, this is no longer Mark, but March, then this number won't change. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do today. Just improve our serial generation system we did last time. I know you love it, but before we begin, if you like this kind of videos, you can hit the subscribe button and the notifications button so you know when there are new videos and, and you can subscribe to the newsletter in my page, Practical Sheets, where you'll find news, courses and a lot of free stuff in your sheets journey. So let's continue with the video. First thing I want to do is to improve a couple of limitations from the last video. The first one being this. Let's try this out. Let's write one. It looks good. Let's write John. It looks good, but if for any reason this is reordered in any way and I write here mark again it repeats a number so I need to make sure first that I'm not repeating numbers and second that I'm putting the greatest number so here it should be five regardless of the order so this is the first thing I'm going to correct so let's go here if you remember, the code generator is very simple. We're just defining some variables to determine where the user is. Then we do a conditional where we decide if the code will execute. And finally, we have another conditional that says that if there's no data, then my reference will be number one. But if there's data, I'm going to add one to the last row. This is where I need to change because I don't want to add to the last row, but I want to look first for the maximum. So I'm going to put this inside brackets so I can put multiple lines and I'm going to bring all my numbers. How do I bring all my numbers? All my numbers, I have them here. So I need to bring the array from B2 to B6. For this, I'm going to my active sheet. I'm going to get range. For now, B2, B6. And I'm going to get the values. I'm going to call this codes. And I want to show you how Google Apps Script fetches these codes. Let's save. I'm going to add here jam. And let's go here to executions. So here it is. It's an array of arrays. Each row or each number, it's in an array. That represents each row. And finally, I have a last array that represents all of the rows, so the complete table. Each one of these, this element is a column, this array element is a row, and this other array element is the collection of rows. So this is nice, but I cannot look for a number in this array. I need to change it. I need an, a simple array for me to be able to use the index of or a method for searching. This is an array for arrays or a bidimensional array. I need a single dimension array. I need to then 
perform an operation or transform it. This is where I'm going to use the map function. The map function is a function that lets me do this transformation. So I'm going to say codes.map and for each row, what I'm going to do is extract with this arrow. This is a, a way of simplifying my functions. And I'm, so I'm saying this is the argument, the row. And I'm going to return for each row, I'm going to return the inside element of that row. So the row is an array, as you saw, it was square brackets and number four. And I'm going to return just the number four without the square brackets. So I'm removing the square brackets with this map function. And if you want to save some space, I'm going to save it in this same code. I'm going to replace the array of arrays with just a simple array. Just for the example, I'm going to show you how does this work. So I'm going to log codes two times, once when I get the original values and then after we do the map function. So let's save. And again, I'm going to put here Robert. Let's go here. Let's refresh. So here it is. First is my bidimensional array and with the map function, I convert it to a single dimension array. And now I can do my max operation. I need to look for the maximum number here. I'm going to delete all of this. So I'm not distorting my data. And here I'm going to my math service. And then I'm going to look for the maximum. However, given that I'm going to look it in an array, I need to use this method apply. And the apply lets me apply this max function to an array. So I need two arguments. The first argument will be null because I'm going to give the array here and the array will be this codes array. And this will be my maximum. So let's call it max. And finally, I'm going just to add one to the max and this will be my code. So max plus one. And this one, my mistake, I have to leave it out of the else because this is where I'm going to paste the code. This one, let's save and let's try it out. So now it doesn't matter the order of the codes. It will always bring the maximum code. Okay. So now what happens if I change this Pedro or if I delete it or something, I'm going to change the name. So here it changes to six. So I want to be able to change the name without changing my code. So here I could add another argument. And for this, I'm going to need this event E. This is something I don't like to use a lot, but it is very useful in this case, where I'm going to define a variable called previous value. This is the value that the cell had before I changed it. But this trigger will only work if I have an unedit function. So here I have to put E here and the same E I'm passing it here. The e is just, um, let's say a convention, but I could put here event to be more clear or EV or however you want to call it. I prefer to leave it like this because in some online examples, you may find it the same way. So here I'm going to say E dot old value. And this will be the previous value. So what I will say is that if the previous value was different than the, the same as here was different than, than nothing. That is that it had a value, then don't do the code. This previous value has to be equals to blank. If it's not equal to blank, then you shouldn't do it. Just uh, and here I also forgot to put the other ampersand. Let's save again. And I'm going to change this for one again. And now it doesn't change. What happens if I delete one of these? What do I want to do? So I would think that then I could delete the code also. 
So here I'm going to add another condition. The condition will be else if this active value equals to blank. If active value equals blank, then my code will be blank. But this is uh, an incongruence because if I'm saying here that it, it cannot be blank, then it will never arrive to this part of the code. So I'm just going to remove this condition because I'm already in this else, I'm already contemplating it. Because if this else if says that it's equal to blank, then by default, this else will be when this is not equal to blank. Let's save again. So let's change it first. And let's delete one. It's not working. The problem I'm having here is that this previous value is saying that it has to be blank. But in this case, the previous value will not be blank. So what I prefer to do is I'm going to put this previous value inside this else. I'm going to change it for an else if. And I'm going to put all of these conditions. The previous value equals to blank. And the active value is different than blank. That's it. So I can remove this here. And actually, I can put it before this other else if. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to remove one of these and it should remove the code. The only thing about this is that my maximum will still be five. So my code in this moment will not be able to identify that there's no three. So if I put another one, it's not working again because here I left it with B2, B6. And this is no good. So I need to change this so that it starts on the row two, column two, but it goes into the last row I have. So this, I will do two, that is my row, then two, that is my column, then, and here is the, the trick. I'm going to active sheet dot get last row. Comma, and this is just one column, so I don't need to put the last argument. And that's it. Let's say I'm going to delete this one. Again, okay. put it again, Frank. And it's still not working. I think this is not working because my previous value, when it is blank, it's not showing as blank, but showing as null. So let's run it again. Here, I'm going to put Frank. I, it doesn't show anything. And then I go to my executions. And here you can see my current value is Frank and my previous value is null. So I could just say here, instead of previous value equals to that previous value is, is an error with this exclamation sign. Let's save. And let's do one more. Finally, it's working. Now I have a better code. I could remove this. And let's just add a couple of comments. So here it will be. Not execute in the headers. Here is look for the maximum reference and at one and here is delete if the name is deleted one thing I can do is here I'm declaring code one two three times so I could uh, declare it here outside of my conditional without the number and then here I have, I can remove this var, remove this var, and remove this var, and it should continue working. Save. And one last example. And it's looking good. Okay. So apparently it all looks good, but there is a mistake that I found out when I was editing the video. 
and is this one that if I change here something remember that we had it that if I change something the number wouldn't change and now it's deleting it why because there is no condition when my previous value is valid and in this case actually I may have done it wrong at the beginning of the video because in this case I don't want to put nothing I don't want to execute this last line of code so what I can do is do another conditional actually I can put it here as I had it at the beginning and is that previous value just do it if previous value is invalid if there is no previous value so let's put this and here I could change I could remove this because it's already given and I think it would work this way so if there is a previous value then don't do anything don't change the code let's, so let's save it and let's go back here and let's change this to scene it doesn't change okay so this is the only thing i needed to fix before we go so i think there are a couple of things we can do in the next video we could add for example a category we could add a reference here for example it's ref 004 ref 002 we could add an, a name because normally our codes when we are talking about reference numbers it's a mix of letters and numbers so we could also do it random but this it's a bit trickier because we need to just check that there is no other random in there but it can be done so just let me know what do you think how can we improve this and we'll do it for the next video thank you for watching and you can help me spreading uh, the word sharing this video if you like it subscribing to the channel or you can uh, go further to my patreon page or to my newly created practical sheets academy where i'm going to have complete courses on sheets on upscript and more you can visit the link in the description and check it out thank you so much see you next time